Hi everyone, is this video going? Yep, sorry, video is going, okay. All right, hello to my class. Um, I want you to, can you open up your books please to page 246? I'm gonna go through this. I'm, I'm gonna try to make it short and sweet. But this, I will be honest with you, this page here, if we were in class, would take me and Miss Rogers the whole class to teach you because we would go through all of these and do lots and lots and lots of examples on our whiteboards. But I'm not gonna make you an hour long video. So I'm gonna cut this really short, okay? In this particular page, we're finding out how to find what we call common denominators so that we can compare fractions. You know that we can't compare fractions unless you have a common denominator. You can't, you can't get a correct picture of it. So we have to figure out how to find a common denominator so that we can, okay? When you compare fractions, I mean, this, here is a, I wrote this out for you. This is exactly what you, what many of you do. We cross multiply, we multiply five times five is 25, 10 times three is 30. We know that 30 is greater than 25, and so obviously this is it. But if I were to ask any of you why this happens and why this is the case and what's the, what's the reason behind this, I'm pretty sure that nobody could explain that <clears throat> mathematically. It's, it, the, the, the reason is algebraic, and it has to do with common denominators. So we really can't understand this process here unless we understand what common denominator is first. I'm not saying you can't use this but I'm saying that I want you to understand what a common denominator is first in order to use this so, so that I'm okay with you using the trick, all right? I need you to understand that. You know me, I need, I need you to understand. Okay, so in this one, three fifths and five tenths, all right? There are, I mean, I can compare that with a picture for sure. I drew these two bars. This one is three fifths. I cut it into three or five equal parts because that's my whole. I shaded three of them. You know, that's my part. And then this part here is tenths. I shaded five tenths. And it's very clear that three fifths is greater than five tenths. Not by much, but it's clear, okay? So there's one way to comparing. We also know that because we compared to halves, we also know that five tenths is the same as what? Someone say it? Uh-huh, one half, okay. So five tenths is also the same as one half because, you know, five is half of 10, okay? So we know that, and we know that three-fifths is more than a half because half of five is two and a half, 2.5 or whatever, and three is more than that. So, you know, we, can, we could explain this in our head with our knowledge of fractions, but I want to explain to you these, these parts here first, which are in your slideshow so that you get the idea. In this case, three-fifths and five-tenths, what we do is we're looking for a common denominator. What they are showing you here in, in, in so many ways, okay, they're showing you that 10 is our common denominator because 5 is a multiple of 10. So 5 is a multiple of 10. If I were to take my 5 and my 10 and list multiples, remember, multiple multiples, they're bigger. I'm going to list all the multiples of 5. Let's just list like 4 of them or 5 of them. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I can go on, right? I still can go on if I wanted to. Let's list multiples of 10. Let's list 5 of them. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right? Uh, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Um... So when I look here, what I'm finding is what I call a least common multiple or a common denominator. So in this case, if I look at this list here, I have 10 and 10 in both lists, and it's the least valued number in both lists. That means I can compare that. That means I can keep my 5 tenths the way it is, and I can change my 3 fifths to an equivalent fraction that has a 10 in it. So how do I do that? Well, how do I get from 5 to 10? I'm waiting for you to think about it. I multiply by 2, and then I multiply my numerator by 2, so 3 times 2 is 6. So now what I have here, this is what I have here, is my 6 tenths, which is the same as 3 fifths, and I'm comparing that to 5 tenths. So that's telling me 
that three-fifths or six-tenths is greater than five-tenths. So this is what we were doing last week in finding those equivalent fractions. Can you see that? Yeah, okay. Can you see? Yes, okay. That's what we're doing. So that's what this is here, okay? Again, we're finding common, what we call, in a sense, common multiples. Let me look at the next one here. Five-eighths and four-fifths. So in five-eighths and four-fifths, they say, you know, sometimes we can take the two and multiply them. They're just giving you a shortcut way of finding a common denominator. Again, let's go ahead and list this eight, and we're going to list the five, because those are our denominators. We're going to list them, and we're going to go ahead and make, and make a list of all the multiples in order. So what are the, let's start with five. It's easy. What are the multiples of five? Let's just do five of them. Five, 10, 15, 20, and 25, right? Let's go through eights. This is where we need to learn how to skip count, or if you already know how to skip count by eights, great, because you know, you're already one ahead. Um, but not easy to do. Let's do it. Eight, what's eight times two? 16. What's eight times three? Thank you, 24. What's eight times four? 32. What's eight times five? 40. Got it, right? Okay, do we have any numbers in this and this that are the same? No, we don't. So we're gonna continue. Let's add another five. 25, let's see, 30, 35, 40, 45. Uh-oh, I just saw something. What, did you see it? Do you see it? Everybody see it? Okay, what I see here is I now have a common number in both lists. So what this tells me now is that my common denominator is going to be 40. So what am I now? Oh, I'm trying to show you this here. Let's see. So what do I have here? 5 eighths. So if I need to change that to a 40 as my numerator, I need to simply find an equivalent fraction. So how do I get from 8 to 40? We're going to multiply by 5. So if I multiply by 5 on the bottom, I'm going to multiply by 5 at the top. 8 times 5 is 40. 5 times 5 is 25. That means that 5 eighths is the same as 25 fortieths. Let's go and look here. Where else am I come here? Oh, 4 fifths. But I want to get that 40 there. So I'm going to put my 40 here because I need a common denominator. All right? So 5 times 8 is 40. 4 times 8 is 32. So now 5 eighths is the same as 25 fortieths. And 4 fifths is the same as 32 fortieths, which tells me 32 is greater than 40. So 4 fifths is going to be greater than 5 eighths, or 5 eighths will be less than 4 fifths, which is what we have here. Okay? If you have questions, you should, you should ask me now. Um, let's move this one over here and do one more. Um, this video is already longer than I wanted it to be. Okay, here we're comparing 5 eighths and 7 twelfths. In this case, we have to, again, find that common denominator, 8 and 12. So, let's list our multiples. Remember, muscle multiples. 8, 16, 8 times 3 is 24, 8 times 4 is 32, 8 times 5 is 40. Let's, let's list the first 12 here, or let's list, sorry, list the first 5 of multiples of 12. 12, 24, 30, 12 times 3 is 36, 12 times 4 is, anyone, anyone, no, 48, 12 times 5 is 60, okay, so do I have commons here, 8, 6, oh, I do, I have 24, so what this tells me is that, let's see, 5 eighths, I need to get that to be a common denominator of 24, so 8 times 3 is 24, so 5 times 3 would be 15. That means that 15 24 is the same as 5 eighths. And then I have here, what was my other one? 7 twelfths. I need to get that to 24. So 12 times 2 is 24, so 7 times 2 is 14. So if I compare 15, this is the same here, and this is the same here, so this tells me that 14 24 is less then 15 24 ths so 7 twelfths is less than 5 eighths, or 5 eighths is greater than 7 twelfths, which is what we have right here. 
So that gives you a little bit of background on finding that common multiple. I really wanted you to be able to find that common multiple. Um, what I'd like you to do right now, because we went through this, I want you to do the, the questions on page 248. On 248, what you're going to find are some word problems here that you're going to have to compare and, and answer with a unit, of course. And then what you're going to do down here is add these fractions. You'll notice that these fractions don't have the same denominator. So you're going to have to figure out how to get them to be the same denominator. So for instance, on this one, I have 2 tenths and 3 one hundredths. I'm going to give you a hint here. 2 tenths is going to have to be, because 10 is a, uh, 110, our common denominator there, is going to be 100. Because when you count by 10s, you hit 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So we want to make that a 100 denominator. And we do that, how do we get from 10 to 100? We multiply by 10. So 2 times 10 is going to be 20. So this here is going to be 20 one hundredths, that's the same as 2 tenths, plus 3 one hundredths, which is going to give me 23 one hundredths. All right, so you saw that. I want you to do this one and this one, and then show me the comparison on this. 248. Now, when you're done, you can take a picture of this pic of this, and you have two options. If you if your parents can take a picture of it and send it to me in an email, sounds great. If you could take a picture with, with it on your Chromebook and then upload it along with your slideshow from today, that would also work. All right, I'm going to try that this today and I'm not going to give you a form. So if you have questions, you could send me a message in Google Classroom. I did find today that it was really easy for the students who just called me on the phone. So go in the slideshow the phone number is in there. Just call my phone and I'll answer it. And I may be able to help you much better that way. But if you want to talk to me on the other ways, that's cool too. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you later. Good luck. Bye.